안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Hey you. It's Italia. And if you don't know me, I have studied Korean for over seven years now. Like I have studied the language in so many different ways. Any way that you can think of, I've done it. Okay. I have studied the language through self-study. I have taken online group classes through the Sejong Institute. I have studied the language as an exchange student here in Korea. I have taken private classes through italki. I have now even attended and graduated from Korean language school here in Korea. And now I am working full time in the marketing department of a Korean company where I use Korean. So I would like to share with you guys my top three tips for learning Korean to fluency for those of you that are either wanting to learn Korean or those of you who have already started learning Korean. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, if you're a frequent viewer of my channel, you've probably heard me say this before, but I'm gonna say it again because I think it is one of the most important things that you should be doing if you're wanting to advance in a language. And that is study the language in context. When you learn Korean in context, it gives you the opportunity to see how certain words, certain expressions, certain grammar structures are actually used. Not to mention it shows you what words tend to be paired together, what structures tend to be paired together. Because while yes, there are textbooks that will say like, hey, this grammar structure tends to be paired with this other grammar structure, not all textbooks do that. And even if they do, there are hundreds of grammar structures. You can't expect yourself to just remember all the pairings. But when you see them in context, I feel like your brain starts to recognize the patterns that are put in front of it. So you're subconsciously being like, oh, you know, these words, they tend to be in sentences together or these grammar structures tend to appear together. Not to mention that when you are learning new words or new grammar structures in context, it creates a stronger sense of meaning and even curiosity because you want to understand like for example if you give me a list of vocabulary words I will study them and I will learn them but unless I continue to review them or if I see them used at work or if I really really try to use them myself frequently I'm probably gonna forget them but if Hobi or J-Hope or my favorite K-pop idol were suddenly to do a live stream you bet I'd be using all of my brain power to understand every single word, every single sentence, everything that he is saying. Not to mention that usually when I learn a word through like a live stream or an interview or something like that, I tend to attach so much importance to that one word that I can tell you years later how I learned that word. Like there are hundreds and hundreds of words that I've actually learned through BTS content where somebody could be like, how do you even know that word? And I will say, Suga said it one time in this one v live when he was talking about blah 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 it's a little embarrassing but it's proof that it works <laughs> now if you're a beginner and you're thinking that's cool natalia but i can't just watch a bts live stream and learn words i'm not at that level yet how am i supposed to learn anything in context well that is where the sponsor of today's video comes in story learning story learning is a platform that enables you to learn korean through context through stories instead of through repetitive drills and memorization the way it works is you start off every lesson by immersing yourself in the language through a story then going on to understand that story the grammar the words the expressions through easily digestible lessons with a native speaker and then going on to review and practice what you have learned. In other words, unlike other resources, story learning has created an environment where you can learn words easily, learn grammar naturally, and even learn about Korean culture through culture segments that allow you to learn about customs, traditions, the Korean way of life, and so on and so forth. Now, I know a lot of you have expressed to me before that you feel kind of alone in your studies, whether it's your family doesn't support your decision to learn Korean, your friends don't support your decision to learn Korean, or maybe they do support you, but no one around you is learning Korean. Korean, so you kind of feel alone. I feel you. That was me when I first started learning Korean. But with story learning, while well, yes, the lessons are pre-recorded, they have created a space where you can connect with other people in the course and even like practice Korean together. So I feel like it kind of just makes the whole language learning process a little less alone. As I mentioned the last time I talked about story learning, I really feel like it's a resource that I would have really, really enjoyed using if it had been around back when I first started learning Korean back in like 2016, which makes me extra excited to share with you guys that story learning is going to be offering you guys, my viewers, a huge, like huge 
discount for a limited time on the Korean Uncovered course. So instead of paying the regular $2.97 for the course, you can get it for just $97. So if you're wanting to, you know, try it out, learn in context, even as a beginner, then I encourage you to check out the course using the link in my description box. Thank you to Story Learning for sponsoring this video and let's jump back into those tips. This next tip is actually one that I've never heard another language YouTuber ever say and to be honest, I don't think I've ever said it on my channel either, which is kind of bad considering it's one of my top three tips and something that I have kept in mind for years while learning Korean. It's to pay special attention to the reactions that native speakers give you when you speak Korean. So I actually heard this in an interview with a Spanish teacher years and years and years ago, but the Spanish teacher was saying that the most fluent, the most natural Spanish speaking students that she's ever had are the ones that are able to recognize when native speakers react kind of negatively to their Spanish. The ones that see, oh, the native speaker is confused. Whatever grammar I just used in this sentence, whatever words I used in this sentence, weren't the most natural way to express this thought, weren't the most natural way to express this idea. So with Korean, if you have the opportunity to speak with native speakers, when you're waiting for them to respond to you, do you notice that they kind of pause and they have to think about what you just said? Do they have to process what you just said? Because if they do, it means that you probably didn't express yourself the way that a native speaker would because they have to take time to think, what is this person trying to say? What do they mean? Now, obviously this isn't always going to be true. Sometimes people weren't giving you their full attention when you said something. Sometimes they really don't know the answer. But I think in most cases you can kind of tell when they don't know the answer as opposed to when they don't know what you said. Another way to tell if your speaking isn't the most natural like way to express a certain idea is to see if the person rephrases what you said. So if you said, hey, like, isn't it supposed to rain today? And they respond to you with, ah, are you asking if it's going to rain today? If they repeat after you, but with a different grammar structure or with a different word, it means that your sentence was most likely incorrect. And if you take a moment to think about it, we do this to children as well when they make a mistake. For example, if a toddler were to say, I want Wawa, the parent is likely to say, oh, do you want water? Do you want your water? Right, like we kind of just repeat the correct way to say whatever idea the toddler is trying to express so that they can learn the correct grammar or the correct words or the correct pronunciation of something. So if you notice that your friend or your teacher happens to be doing that, it's probably because you said something wrong. My next tip is to use transcripts in your studies. So I feel like the value of transcripts in language learning isn't emphasized enough in the Korean language learning community. And I'm very, very passionate about this. It really made me feel like I went from intermediate to like advanced to like, yeah, let me just listen to this random broadcast about who knows what and just be like, do, 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 do. yeah, I understand, do, 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 do. Like, you need transcripts, okay? Ugh. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting really passionate about this because I feel like so many of you guys come to me in my DMs or in my comment section being like, hey, Natalia, um, so how do I improve my listening? Hey, Natalia, how do I improve my Korean pronunciation? I feel like it's so awkward. Natalia, how, how do I learn more vocabulary? I need more vocabulary. My vocabulary is not big enough. And honestly, you can improve all of these skills by using transcripts in your studies. So you guys have probably noticed that when you listen to a dialogue from your textbook, when you watch a live stream of your favorite idol, when you watch a K-drama, right? Assuming that you are watching content that is at your level, let's say slightly above your level, right? Because you're still wanting to learn. It's unlikely that you're gonna understand everything. And then if you go to look at the transcript or the Korean closed captioning, you're like, hey, I know these words, these words that I completely missed. I didn't hear them at all. Honestly, if you're not hearing it when it appears in native content, it's probably because you have been spending a little more time working on your reading skills rather than doing listening and speaking exercises. And I say this because while you know the word, you might be able to see the word written down and instantly know it, you're not used to hearing the word. Perhaps you haven't been reading aloud or maybe you've been pronouncing the word incorrectly. So when a native speaker said it, you didn't recognize it because you had trained your brain to recognize it the way you've been pronouncing it. So the way that I personally like to study with transcripts is I will listen to that piece of content once, maybe two times, potentially three times if I think it's hard. And then I will go to the transcript and I will read along highlighting the new words and also highlighting which words I know 
but completely missed when listening to the piece of content. Then I will go back to the audio content and listen to it while reading along with the transcript and trying to hear, this is the most important part, I am trying to hear every single word that is on the transcript. Especially when you start getting to the higher levels and you start hearing native content, right? Not everyone is going to enunciate their words. Once I've listened to the dialogue a few times with the transcript, you know, following along, then I will just listen to the audio content and see if I can understand everything, see if I hear all the words. If there are any parts where my brain just, it's like it's blank, like even if I know what the sentence is, right? Like the goal of this exercise is not to understand the majority of what's going on. The goal of this exercise is to understand every single piece of what is being said, every single word that is being used. And I know some people might disagree with me and say like, you don't need to understand every single word and every single piece of content that you're using to study, but I disagree. If you're wanting to get to an advanced level, if you're wanting to get to a native level, sound like a native and understand the same pieces of content that natives can, then I think you should try to understand every single word. Obviously, if it's a random like element of the periodic table, then you can, it's fine if you don't understand what that means, if you know it's an element of the periodic table. If you go through the audio and try to at least hear every single word, your listening improves a lot, your pronunciation improves a lot, and of course you're going to learn new words while looking up words, while learning to hear them, while learning to understand them in context. I think it's really, really beneficial. And like I said earlier, it really took my listening skills from being like, I'm an intermediate learner to being like, yeah, let me just go watch this piece of Korean content and not even have to try. So those are my top three tips for learning Korean to fluency. So if you wanna hear me talk about the mistakes I made as an intermediate learner, you can check out this video right here. And of course, thank you to Story Learning for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, there is a special limited time offer for those of you that use the link in my description box to sign up for Story Learning. So check it out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So tell me about you guys. Bye.